So um, Dr. Soko is going to pray for us and then we will move to introductions. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Shall we pray? Gracious God, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we come before you with praise and thanksgiving because your love and faithfulness for us all and you are forever. We come before you this morning as a people called into your kingdom, drawn from different backgrounds, transcending barriers in order to transform lives. As we discuss our mission agenda, our partnership and relationships, our goals and expectations, we seek your presence and your wisdom that Lord, you are going to guide us and build us together. And so we pray for the power of the Holy Spirit to be with us all as we now enter into our discussion and the conversation in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So I think I, I'm, I'm glad you can all hear, um, even, but, but please uh, use the chat um, under under their, um, the the bar to for uh, if you want to communicate something, do not hide, do, you know, do not prevent yourself from the communication. Um, you can use the chat and we will all um, chip in to really see the chats and, and, and come up with uh, a way to bring the, the, the ideas to the, um, to the platform. Thank you so much, you all, for being on this call. Um, I know it was um, it, it's a part of your time and we will take um, just not, to, not so much of your time, but enough time for us to uh, communicate, especially for our part with our partners in Zambia. Thank you for all your contributions uh, that have come handy. And Dr. Soko will talk to that in a minute. But on the part of the Outreach Foundation, let me just um, um, ask Nancy, do you want to give some greetings from the Outreach Foundation? Wearing two hats? Nancy? I, I am happy to do that. So welcome to all of you. Uh, the, the Outreach Foundation, as some of you may know, is an organization that uh, it connects uh, churches, individuals, uh, particularly within the broad reformed and uh, Presbyterian family uh, for the purposes of joining together in God's mission globally. And uh, so primarily we help bring American Presbyterians alongside uh, those in places like Zambia, 37 countries where outreach is connected and involved uh, and seek to build uh, strong uh, on long-going relationships and to uh, serve the, the needs of our partners. So, yeah. Thank you so much. And, and welcome to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I will let Dr. Soko talk about Justo Mwari and... I want also to uh, uh, say thank you uh, very much, Nancy, who is our board chair in the uh, Outreach Foundation. I want also to extend uh, uh, our appreciation to all our partners who have worked with Justo Mwari for many, many years. Some of us are joining uh, the program and the partnership and some of us have been there for some time now. Uh, a brief overview of who, uh, uh, who is Just Omale or what is Just Omale. Uh, first and foremost, Just Omale is a ministry of the Reformed Church in Zambia. The Reformed Church in Zambia was established in 1899. And by 1951, the vision of training evangelists and the Just Omale uh, 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 College was established in the Eastern Province. 
It was not initially called the Jews of Mali. It was a, a theological training college for the Reformed Church in Zambia. And two later, uh, when it moved to Lusaka uh, in the late 1960s, the college was named after the first minister who was ordained in 1929. Uh, by the name of Reverend uh, Justo Mari. Hence the background of the name of Justo Mari. Currently, Justo Mari University uh, has uh, a vision, and its vision is uh, a, a leading Christian university in sub Saharan Africa. And the purpose or the goal of being a leading Christian university in sub Saharan Africa is to provide the quality and the contextual uh, education that empowers people who train for ministry to work for the society in various communities. And as I speak now, uh, Justomare cutters for a number of uh, our partner denomination in Sub-Saharan Africa. I'm saying just uh, initially it was uh, 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 aimed at training evangelists for those who should become full time in the church, the reformed church in Zambia. But the demand and the desire grew such that as I speak now, just is training a min for ministers from different partner denominations. We have uh, students coming from Malawi through the CCAP, uh, Homer Synod, Livingstonia Synod, Blantyre Synod. We have students coming from um, Mozambique, IPM, Presbyterian Church. We have people coming from the United Presbyterian Church, uh, both in Zambia and South Africa. We have uh, students coming from CCAP, Harare Synod, that is Zimbabwe. We have CCAP students coming within Zambia. We have the Dutch Reformed Church who send students from Namibia and Botswana. Mm -hmm. We also now have students uh, from other Nami uh, 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 who are not Protestant churches, but from uh, the Anglican Church, from the United, uh, the United Church of Zambia, and also from uh, 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 the Pilgrim Wazilian Church. All these now send their students to Justo Mare. Why is Justo Mare preferred for training for ministry? Our curriculum and our training does not only train students to minister only through the word, but it only forms the character of a student. When students are placed with Justo Mare, they are also trained in how to be a minister in a particular context in a congregation. They are attached to congregations throughout their training at Justo Mare. We have companion studentship uh, 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 groups at Justo Mare, which helps to form a student in his character for ministry. And so because of this type of training, our training has really received a lot of approval by uh, the sending denominations. And we want to say thank you very much, our partners through various denominations who have continued to support our ministry and our training of students at Justo Mali University. Thank you so much. Uh, would you tell us how many how many students currently in total are just from where? We have uh, 70 uh, students now training at Justo Mare. We have uh, 19 in the women's ministry, and we have 51 in the, uh, uh, those who are doing Bachelor of Theology uh, for four years. Okay. Mm. But um, tell us what makes Justo Mare different from other universities around. Yes, you, tell, you said it's a leading university, but how do you currently see that role as a leading university in Sub-Saharan Africa? Yeah, Justo Mare is a leading Christian university in Sub-Saharan Africa because one, uh, at Justo Mare, students who come to train at Justo Mare, 
they are recommended and seconded by their denominations. We already have a, a, a memorandum of understanding the partnership with these denominations. And when we, when we, what makes us different is that our training is building on a character of someone who should serve in an ordained ministry, one. Secondly, almost everyone who comes to be trained here has already got uh, 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 an attachment with a sending church. And so the sending church and the Justomale work hand in hand in order to see to it that the training meets the expectation of the sending church. And these students, throughout their training, they are attached to their various denominations for the four-year period that they are with us. In other uh, universities, you only go there academically. Mm -hmm. uh, the spiritual aspect and character formation is absent. It is just a training like any other social program one can go into. But Justo Male has a different program. Every Fridays, we have chapel, which is compulsory for our students. Every Wednesdays, we have a chapel, which is compulsory for our students and staff. Uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays, we have sports to build the interaction and relationship with each other. And also that we are not uh, bringing students only from one background. There are different cultures that meet. And as such, one is built already from the uh, institution or from the uh, university, how to inter integrate oneself with various cultures of various backgrounds. So this is a very unique component of uh, Justo Male University. And how does it compare uh, on the level of academics with other universities? Do you have a, a set of curriculum or do you have a shared uh, uh, common um, values with other universities? Or how do you interact with them? Yeah, uh, our curriculum is, 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 is our own. Mm -hmm. uh, it is not a curriculum borrowed from any other university. And for your own information, our students, anyone who graduates at Justo Mare with a Bachelor of Theology, take him to any other university. Mm -hmm. uh, I can testify that if you went to Austin Theological Seminary here in the USA, uh, they will tell you we have, we have uh, a partnership and we have been sending our students there for quite a number of years. They have been outstanding. Even mm -hmm. now, if you went there to ask how are the students from Zambia, particularly Justo Male, when they come to do their masters here at Austin, how is their performance? It is outstanding. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, is it Justo Male a registered university or is it just um, church, you know, affiliated? Or is it registered in Zambia um, as, a, as part of the educational board or? How do you? Beginning between 1996 to uh, 2011, we worked with the uh, ACTIA, uh, Association of Theological, uh, of Theological Institution in Zambia, who helped us to build our curriculum and who helps us also to monitor our uh, standards of uh, training. And so if you came to Justo Mare, uh, we have the ACTIA uh, 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 standards of training. And then uh, beginning uh, 2011, when we were moving from a college to a university, mm -hmm. we are now registered with the, the Higher Education Authority uh, of, uh, in Zambia. And this Higher Education Authority is the a uh, controlling uh, board of all tertiary education in Zambia. You cannot be a university without uh, registered, without being registered. And the, all our programs uh, must be uh, accredited. There is registration and accreditation. Yes. So the registration is to give us the status of a university. Accreditation is to give us authority and acceptance of the programs that we offer. So as I speak, uh, Justo Mario University 
is officially registered as a university, as one of the universities in Zambia by the Higher Education Authority. Wonderful. I think we can, uh, if you want to ask some questions, um, feel free to unmute yourself and ask a question. I think we we have heard a background uh, of, uh, of a university or uh, just Tomari University. And um, if you really have, a, if you have a question or an intervention, feel free to um, unmute yourself and uh, ask the question either to Dr. Soko or a clarification. You're welcome. So um, I, I am going to have to jump off the call in just a couple of minutes, but um, I was really struck by what you said about the number of different countries and different denominations and different backgrounds that students come from. And um, I'm just wondering kind of practically how, how uh, Justin helps students to connect and um, maybe have even some conversations about their differences. Um, I'd love to hear you say more about that before I go. Wonderful. Uh, thank you uh, very much, Claire. Um, first and foremost, our official uh, language in training and learning in Zambia is English. And so whosoever comes uh, to be a student at Justo Mare, we take it that we are going to communicate with that student in English. Uh, secondly, uh, the denominations that come, uh, or that send their students to just Omani, we do not, our curriculum is not teaching a particular faith. Mm. We, we teach our reformed tradition, and we do not indoctrinate any of the student to align him to a particular faith. One keeps his identity in a diversity mm. and continues to grow with that identity in diversity. And good enough is that some of these are denominations that send their students to, 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 to Zambia, they do not have their own denominations where we can place the students for practicals. We go to other churches, partner churches, sister churches, one comes from Mozambique. There is no IPM in Zambia. Mm -hmm. So where is he going to be aligned to? We send him either to CCP Zambia, uh, Synod of Zambia, either to UPCSA Zambia, either to the Reformed Church in Zambia. In the interaction process, this person is able to learn the culture, possibly to learn even our vernacular languages, because these churches preach and mix up. Yeah you would be surprised and shocked that some of these students even have ended up being married or being uh, 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 you know, uh, to a Zambian. <laughs> and others opt even to, to, to remain and apply to save a particular denomination in Zambia. So our culture is, is embracing. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. I love, to hear, I love to hear that and how ecumenical it is, what you described about people keeping their different identities amidst diversity reminds me a lot of my own seminary experience at Princeton Theological Seminary here. So um, it's very good to hear. I'm sorry I have to go, um, but uh, I will listen to the rest of the recording. And it was just lovely to meet you and hear from you. Thank, thank you, Claire. You, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Claire. More questions, more clarifications? Sure, Dr. Soko, thank you for uh, taking the time to do the webinar here. I know that there are also smaller Bible colleges and things like that throughout Zambia. Is Justo Mwale sort of the, the leader of that pack? Or how do you relate? Do you have students who have come through um, smaller theological colleges or Bible schools that then come up to Justo Mwale or do you send them out to go teach or how do, how do the, how do you relate to those schools? Yeah, first and foremost, thank you for that question, is that uh, Justo Mwale is not uh, there as uh, an afterthought institution 
uh, to train ministers. Mm. It has existed along with the development of the church in Zambia. And so the Reformed Church in Zambia has been in existence over a period of 100 years, since 1896. And this college, uh, this university we are talking about, started in 1951. And so its existence has already attained that uh, 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 position in society as a reputable uh, institution. Mm -hmm. And so when other colleges like Chasefu uh, from the CCAP, uh, Synod of Zambia, uh, Nkoma uh, from Zomba uh, in Malawi, uh, when they send their students, they come here to upgrade mm -hmm. their studies. Right because these studies might offer uh, a diploma in theology. But as we are offering a Bachelor of Theology, and we have some uh, components of our courses like Hebrew and the Greek, which in other uh, co uh, 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 colleges, this component is not there. And right. some of the denominations, they prefer their ministers mm -hmm. to have to take in Greek and Hebrew. And so we have maintained this. This is one of our difference with many other uh, smaller, if I may call them, smaller colleges in Zambia. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you. you. More questions? Yeah, I don't know who is going to respond, but how can, is it, is it using the scholarship, for, for example, if we want to send uh, one of our uh, uh, anyways who who servant in our in our church mm -hmm. to attend the training to, to, to the course there at just somewhere uh, in addition to teaching in the university in, in, I'm, I'm i'm also elder in my church okay and so, you want uh, to send a student to Justo Mwari University? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. How, how, uh, how is that going to happen? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, first and foremost is uh, you apply. Mm -hmm. You make mm -hmm. yourself known and mm -hmm. we will give you uh, 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 the, the 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 procedure in how uh, that application is going to be done we you can you can see us on our website and the, also when you receive the uh, 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 the acceptance letter uh, the provision acceptance letter it will tell you uh, what what qualifications we need in your in your country we will measure uh, that credit in your country to find out whether it matches with our Zambian uh, uh, minimum qualification for one to enter into a university. If you qualify and you have uh, the capacity of sponsorship, we will admit that student. We will admit that student. We have no. Pro we have had students from Nigeria. Mm -hmm. uh, we okay. have had students from here, USA. We have had students from the Democratic Republic of Congo. We have had students even from Ethiopia. Yeah. So uh, we are open to every uh, would-be candidate to come and train with Justomale University. Great, great. Thank you. There's a question about um, how to maintain for a church that supports a student at Justomale how do they um how can they maintain a relationship with the with the student especially if they sponsor a student and the student goes back home or even when they, when they are still at the university how do they maintain a close relationship because we are we are we are all about building relationship how do we maintain a relationship with the student and the pastor when they become pastors yeah, uh, the, the the relationship is 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 built from beginning. If you are sponsoring this student, who should then, at the end, come back to be your minister? It means all what this student is doing, the university will be in touch with you. 
and we will communicate if that church of yours is not there. For example, we had someone from Nigeria, from the Assemblies of God. We have never had the, a student from Assemblies of God within Zambia. But Justomale University uh, uh, is in good relationship with all other uh, 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 churches and the uh, colleges. So we attached this student who was from Assemblies of God to a church within the Assemblies of God in Zambia. Uh, Justo Male may, may, made that initiative and, it, and, and, and the response was very good. And we had even to send this student from a completely different church uh, for a five weeks practical work in the Reformed Church in Zambia. So that relationship is built between the church sending and us as a training institution. And then how about um, sponsors like the US sponsors? Yes, uh, the US sponsors, uh, we, 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 our link with them is, 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 is through uh, our, our, our uh, 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 updates that we should always update them. Who is this student? When is he completing? Uh, whether this student is single or married, all those, uh, 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 all that information, we usually link up with the, our partners, even in the USA. And the possibly during graduations, we we send invitation letters that they can come and be part of the celebration of a student whom they have worked with for a past four years or two years that she he is graduating. Then, uh, did you get an answer to your question? Okay, I guess I guess that was answered. <laughs> I guess that was answered. We also want to say that the Outreach Foundation do sends regular updates um, to sponsors, and especially with. Um, you know, but of course we also rely on the on just Omari sending us those updates, um, and so this is a question of communication. I think when we when we could um, uh, how we could uh, improve, there is really need to improve our communication in a way that we we keep receiving those updates and spreading them out. And um, but I think there is also a way to encourage the student to um, communicate with the sponsor. I think we, we have a case, like uh, a case in other universities where um, we, the Outreach Foundation really, you know, help the communication between a sponsor and the student, but it really depends upon that student and the ability to communicate. If they don't have an email, if they don't have this and this, not, of, not everyone in Africa may have an email address or may have access to the internet, but on, on campus at Justomari, they have a good internet. When they go back in their village and uh, are, attending, uh, are attending to the, probably to the parish, they may not have access to those communications. They may not have access to a technology, but at Justomari, I'm pretty sure they can still communicate with the sponsors. Uh, yes, I have a, I have a question. Um, can you tell me which congregations are represented at Justin Wally? I know that uh, CCAP is represented. Can you tell me the other congregations that, uh, that you have students uh, uh, represented there at Just Marley? Uh, not particularly congregations, but denominations. Uh, we have the uh, students from CCAP, Synod of Zambia. Uh, we have students from CCAP, Koma uh, Synod in Malawi. We have students from CCAP, Zomba Synod in Malawi. We have students, CCAP, Livingstonia Synod, Malawi. We have students, CCP Harare Synod in Zimbabwe. We have students from U Uniting Presbyterian Church, Zambia. Uh, we have students from the Uniting Presbyterian Church, South Africa. 
we have students from the Dutch Reformed Church, Namibia mm. and Botswana, and we have students from uh, Pentecostal uh, denominations. Of course, we have students from the Reformed Church uh, in Zambia. Can you remind us what CCAP stands for? This is Church of Central Africa Presbyterian. Church of Central Africa Presbyterian. Thank you. I have a question also. What do you see as unique challenges that students? Uh, it, why it, the question has two parts. Uh, unique challenges to your students during their period of study and unique challenges to them then when they return to their contexts. What yeah. do you see as the unique challenges for which you are working with the students in your context in Zambia? Uh, thank you, thank you very much for that question. Uh, one of the unique challenges we are facing as an, as an institution in the, uh, offering the uh, education is that because of the upgrading that Justomale is now a university, the infrastructure which is there is not, uh, 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 is not meeting the current status of uh, the university. We need to have improved the hostel accommodation, mm -hmm. which should provide the conducive learning atmosphere for a student. Because our students are in two categories. Uh, we have married students. Some bring their families on campus. We have single students, those who come without their families. And so the, the infrastructure which is supporting us uh, is odd enough that it needs to be uh, uh, reworked on. The classrooms, the theater rooms, also are not enough to meet this immediate need of our, of our uh, students. And so this is the struggle that uh, we are trying to work through, that the infrastructure needs to be uh, uh, reworked on in order to meet a conducive learning environment for our students. Mm. Secondly, uh, the church in Africa is growing. It is not only in the urban setting, it is in the rural. And the rural interpretation of African setting is very different from the rural interpretation like in the USA or in the West. He, in the rural setting of uh, Sub-Saharan Africa, a minister can be in charge of possibly four or five congregations whose radius is over uh, 50 kilometers. And he has no vehicle, he has no bicycle, he has no motorbike, you need to walk. And this is posing quite a big challenge to our students. Thanks to some of our partners uh, who have taken upon themselves that they give us uh, gifts of bicycle every graduation to enable those students or graduates who go in such remote areas where they cannot communicate, where there's no any public transport, possibly to ease their transport uh, uh, by giving them uh, a, a gift of a bicycle. Mm -hmm. And this is truly our main challenge. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What, what about from the student's perspective? What are the challenge? I, I understand the transportation issue when they're covering so many, uh, such a broad area. Um, what, uh, what are unique challenges they face within their congregations in Africa? Yeah, 
uh, the context varies from country to country. Zambia, Malawi, Mozambique, South Africa, Botswana, Namibia, and so forth. Uh, one of the unique challenges that they face uh, if they go out is the fact that uh, some of these uh, 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 congregations are not financially able mm -hmm. to support the day-to-day -day upkeep of a minister. They're not able. But because of that passion and the zeal that this person wants to serve the Lord, he is sent to go to such an area and work with that concrete faith that the Lord one day will provide. It has not been easy. In some situations, it's really very, very, very difficult. Very difficult. So these are some of the challenges that uh, the, 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 the graduates who go into ministry faces. Again, it, it is becoming an avoidable situation because the church is growing and it is expanding in such remote areas. And the question is, Will we neglect such a, a, a growth? Shall we not send someone there? Are we going to wait to have enough resources, money, when to send the people there? At the same time, uh, there is uh, 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 a mushrooming of different uh, churches, uh, 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 prosperity gospel, uh, faith and healing, Pentecostalism, and so you find that people are swayed to uh, churches that do not have the firm foundation of our faith as Christians. And so when we just let the people to be on their own, they drift to other churches. And so the churches in Africa, um, most especially the mainland churches, are facing an uphill battle both financially, due to the growth of the church, to protect uh, this uh, faith and help people to align their Christianity with a God whom is real. I think that's a, that's a big challenge for many, many, in many ways, because you, you preach the gospel, but then, you know, it's like Paul uh, <laughs> sowing seeds and you know, someone else in coming and sowing some other seeds that are not good. Um, and really, this is a, this is a critical um, situation in many, many African churches. It's, it, it's, they lack resources to pay the ministers. They lack, they, it's not a job like here. It's really a sacrificial way of serving God. And, and health issues are there. Like they face those health issues like we face them. Uh, and they, if they are not paid, it's really in their student. Their, their children have to go to school. If I mean, it's what it was so sad one time when I visited um, uh, one church, and their mini, the minister's children could not be trained because they can't find money to train their children. And and it's it's really been a, it, it's been a, a, a difficult situation for. I think the church has a difficult situation too, but individuals on an individual level, they do have those challenges. And to add on, because of this challenge, Just Omala University would like to integrate its curriculum with skills training, mm. so that the trainee does not only learn how to do pastoral work, it should be a curriculum that involves both all aspects, the head, uh, the heart, and the hands, yes. such that in such situations, it does not mean that all opportunities are lost to this congregation or to this pastor, but to enable this uh, pastor to discover and to take and to look at opportunities, even in situations which one can consider as very deplorable. Yeah. Are there not opportunities? that he can grow together with the church. So our training now is holistic, yes. that this student is not only trained for preaching and for burying dead people and praying for the sick, mm -hmm. but also to empower this graduate in how best he can do sustainability 
uh, 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 approaches to enable both the congregation and his at an individual level to grow through such situations. Thank you. That's that's wonderful to hear. Any more questions? If no, no more questions or clarifications, we will um, uh, say thank you so much for being on this call. Thank you so much for your support. Some of your congregations have supported Justo Mwari students for over 15 years, uh, 17 years. Um, uh, and it's really been, uh, I think, a, a two way blessing for the church in Africa and for our churches here in America. Um, thank you so much for being there and for sustaining the university as well as the churches in Africa and for journeying with them. Thank you so much for your congregation and please send these thank yous to the congregation you representing. Um, I think Dr. Soko, would you give us your last um, conclusions? I would say uh, I'm privileged even to meet the board chair of the Outreach Foundation. Uh, the honor is mine. Thank you very much to be on this panel. I want to say thank you very much to uh, the, uh, the Outreach Foundation for uh, hosting me here. Thank you also to our partner uh, 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 churches uh, that have been supporting Justo Male for quite a number of years. We want to say uh, your contribution has really made what Justo Male is. Uh, we pledge to be committed to your support and be relevant to expectations. We thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, uh, one, one person asked a question, if they can attend a graduation ceremony of their students. Um, I think someone can really, um, I think Dr. Soko said it loud, out loud that you are welcome to attend the graduation uh, and can you really you know, ensure that it's true that uh, in some of the churches, I know some of the churches have attended graduation ceremonies. Yeah, it's, 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 and what time is the graduation? Yeah. We, 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 we will be always uh, humbled by your presence during such periods of celebration. A graduation is a big event where we witness both where our resources have gone, who has benefited through these resources, who is facilitating, who is the channel of growth in these resources. What is Justo Mare? Where is it plotted in Africa? And so when you attend this graduation, you build uh, extended uh, 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 communications and connections. You become more uh, in the network because you not only learn about Justo Male, but you also get connected to the CCAP culture. Who is CCAP? Who is UPCSA? Who is RCZ? And you see that diversity coming in re reality during that graduation. So it is a big event. You are mostly invited. Our graduation for 2020 is going to be in September. The date will be communicated to you. Wonderful. And also there, is a, um, there are some, uh, some other opportunities. I think uh, so many of the, of the church, of the, of the um, people have gone to Justo Maria to give short courses or to offer you know, some talks or some, you know, some wonderful things of sharing. We have so many who have um, approached the Outreach Foundation or who have approached individually, who have approached Justo Mwari. Can you really tell us about you know, the ways to connect, to get to um, like offer a course or you know, a visit? Um, of a workshop or something like that at Justo Mare? Yes. Uh, currently, Justo Mare uh, is an ecumenical institution. Some of your uh, 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 members in the partnership are with us at Justo Mare as lecturers, such as uh, uh, Dustin Ellington and his wife. They have been with us for the past seven years now, and they would want to continue to be there. Yes. 
uh, it's not only him. We have uh, the PCN, uh, Protestant Church of the Netherlands. They are there on campus. We have people from the Dutch Reformed Church in South Africa. They are on campus. Ted Wright stayed at our campus and he offered some courses together with his wife. So if, 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 if our partners, either from a congregation level or from the Outreach Foundation, would want you have someone who could come and offer a short course, you are most welcome. We have, uh, we have what we call in our planning, we have a space for what we call guest lecturers mm -hmm. who can come and offer a 30 credit hour course in either three weeks or so. This time around, we have Dr. Douglas Fletcher, yeah. who has been with us since mm -hmm. September. Mm -hmm. He's still, um, I believe, he's still at Justo Mali as I'm speaking here. Yeah. He's there. Mm -hmm. We have we had the um, uh, uh, Richie Hansen, he has come twice. He is now an associate member of the Outreach Foundation. Mm -hmm. He has come twice. We have Dr. Sods from Ruleville. He has been coming to Zambia uh, uh, for the past eight years. So we are connected. We, this year, we had even extended an invitation to the executive director, Rod Widener, to be the guest of honor at our graduation. Yes. Unfortunately, he, unforeseen circumstances, mm -hmm. he couldn't make he couldn't it. Make. So the chair, the board chair, of the Outreach Foundation. <laughs> and we already started to plan for you being a guest of honor in the 2020 September graduation. There you go. <laughs> I'm was serious. Very kind I'll take it to my management to say uh, 2020 uh, guest of honor is the board chair of the Outreach Foundation. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate the invitation. So, okay. Yes. Um, Thank you. I think we want we don't want to take much of your time, like I said at the beginning. But I really appreciate this time. Um, uh, and so I would um, ask, um, hmm, who can pray for us? Dan, are you on the call? Are you still there? Dan Dibivwazi, Brian, Brian, are you still on the call? <laughs> Brian, are you still on the call? Yeah, I don't know how to, I'm trying to figure out how to unmute myself. You're uh, unmuted. You're good. Unmuted. We are unmuted and uh, we were uh, looking at someone who can pray for us. Okay, I'll pray for us. Thank you. Lord Jesus Christ, we give you thanks and praise for who you are and who you are making us to be as your disciples all around this world that you have created. We thank you for the ministry of Yustin Mawali and Professor Soko and for all of those who are so diligently lifting up uh, the word of God and uh, training those students there to be passionate evangelists in their communities around Africa. Bring your blessing upon them uh, during this academic year, that they would continue to grow strong in the knowledge and wisdom of our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, that um, they would truly be a blessing to the churches and the communities in which they serve. So keep Reverend Soko safe as he travels here, and uh, through it all, we give you praise uh, for your graciousness and your mercy in our lives. And we pray this in the strong name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, you all, for coming, for being on the call. Thank you, Mary. Uh, thank okay. you, John. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, everyone. And uh, our friend from, uh, from Ethiopia, thank you so much. And give our greetings to your church. Uh, we will do so. Thank you, Bradley. Thank you. We will be organizing this often. So look forward to meeting you again sometime soon. Okay. Okay. God bless. Thank you, thank you for much. doing this, Sabrali. Well done. Thank you. And welcome, Dr. Soko. May the rest of your visit be fruitful. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Bless you. Yeah. And take, take our greetings back to your faculty and staff, please. Please, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.